All right, guys, so this is a 149 kilowatt electric motor that equals out to about 200 horsepower, and this is a rush. They need it back right away. They were pretty sure it just needed to be washed, and it spins freely, but once we pulled that blower fan off the top and looked inside at the winding, we could see things are a little bit more serious. A simple wash and dry isn't going to fix this issue. We'll take a look inside the pecker head or the junction box. We'll see how everything is connected. We want to put this back exactly as we took it out. Now, the reason that they probably thought this thing was just dirty is because if we do a mega ohm test on this, it's not reading a direct short to ground or it would be 0.00. .00. Now you will see that with motors that are just dirty. However, we don't actually have a ground fault here and we'll look a little deeper into that. Now on some of these motors, they tend not to run lead wire out. So if we just pull the sleeving back, we can see they're actually just running the direct magnet wire right up to this lug and that's how it's being connected. I counted 40 wires being connected to that, but that doesn't mean we're winding this with 40 wires because when we look inside, we can see that this actually branches off into different circuits. Now, opposite of our connection end where the blower is on our drive end, we have these little thermal overload sensors. So these are there to shut the motor down if it gets too hot, but they should be monitoring the three phases and the way that they have these set up, it's monitoring one phase. Now I'm gonna say that this is a turn to turn short because it is not phase to phase. That's one coil of one group that short it to itself, probably from vibration, just wearing through that enamel coating of that wire over time, or maybe something flew through that blower and hit the backside of that winding. I did also notice this damage on here and that was not caused by me because I did pull the rotor out in the opposite direction of this. You gotta be careful when you're pulling those rotors out that you're not damaging the winding on the way out. This is the ID tag from the motor. So we got 460 volts, 234 amps, 149 kilowatts. This was also from 2021. So this motor is not that old. We're going to want to take measurements of all the dimensions of the way that these windings stick out because they're going to have to go back in. Everything has to fit back together. Also, if we make that winding too long, we're going to mess with the resistance of it. It's going to create excessive heat. It's not going to perform the same and it's going to have a shorter life over time. After we've burned this thing off in an oven to get all of that varnish off, we can start pulling this connection back and you can see that we actually have four circuits. So this is a six lead. You could call it a four circuit Y delta. We have six leads. It could be connected delta or Y and we have four conductors from each group going to one lead. We run these through that burn off oven so that we can peel all these connections back and you can see it makes these coils nice and loose. So we'll be able to pull these out because we have to count how many turns on each coil we have. We also need to note this span. So if we count in the middle here, we can see that we have a 10, 12 span. Once that connection has been identified, I just start cutting all those off so that they're out of my way. Let's see if I can give you an idea how this works. So we're going to turn this set of coils on here and then turn it off. Then we'll turn this set of coils on here and turn it off. And then this set of coils on here and turn it off. And then we're going to turn these back on. But because it's AC, we're going to flip the polarity. It's going to be a different pole. And we're going to do that and ride that sine wave. We're going to create a rotating magnetic field. Here's your four poles of one phase. After we've got all that stuff ripped out of there, we're going to clean up that stator. We'll get it prepped so that we can wind it. And you can see this thing's actually still pretty hot, about 140 to 150 degrees, depending on where we're checking in there. We could throw in front of a fan for a little bit to cool it off, but this thing looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? It's actually kind of cool looking to see it sitting on the cart. With nothing in this and nothing assembled, it weighs almost 400 pounds. Now we have to re-insulate all 48 of these slots. So we have 12 groups of two coils per group. Each coil is gonna occupy two slots, occupy four slots per group. So that's gonna take up our 48 slots. I'm gonna individually crease each one of these pieces of paper because it has a flat bottom on it. And just that paper creaser is like 3,200 bucks. I also marked our lead location so that when we're done with this, we put everything back where we took it from. I'll make a couple test coils just to see how these things fit. And these ones were a little bit too long for my liking. So I'm going to shorten them up and we'll start throwing these things in that stator. Now you can do phase insulation while you're winding it. it. I do it both ways. Sometimes I do it while I'm winding it. Sometimes I do it after. It just depends on the winding and how I'm feeling that day. Now, even though a lot of the hard work has been done so far, there's still quite a bit of work to go. But once I've got all those coils in, I'm going to check these dimensions. We really want to be either the same size or smaller. If we make this winding any larger, we're going to change the resistance. We're going to increase the heat again, and we're going to have a winding that doesn't last as long as the original. Us using the quality materials that we do, this thing will definitely last longer than three years. We don't want to forget to put those thermal overloads back in, but I'm going to put one in each phase. That way we're monitoring that temperature evenly. And instead of just running that magnet wire out into a lug, we're actually going to use lead wire inside of this. I'm going to use this green masking to keep the varnish from sticking anywhere I don't want it to stick. And we'll do a couple test runs of this. So I did actually dip this stator vertically also because I didn't want any of the varnish to build up inside of those cooling vents and obstruct any of the airflow to help this thing stay cool. And we can use a little tack light like this. And you can see that when it's on, you can see that the keyway just almost seems like it's still. We can do this if we match the RPM with the strobe of that gun. 
let this motor run for a duration of time. We'll be checking it with thermal cameras. We'll be monitoring the current that's going through it. And even though you probably think we're done now, we still got to terminate all these connections. I want to put them back on the same post that they were on. That way there's no confusion when it gets back to them and they go to hook it up. It's not going to spin in the wrong direction or anything like that. You can see it looks pretty clean. Everything's being repainted. It's got all brand new bearings inside of it. We also did completely rebuild that blower on the top also. It didn't need to be rewound, but it has fresh new bearings. Everything's been clean. This thing's ready to go back to the customer. As always, I appreciate all the likes and follows and comments. Cheers, guys.